What's going on YouTube? You got Mr. Law Jones here with a, another video. Hope all is well with you. Um, today you're gonna do a little bit of quick repair on the 94 Cadillac DeVille 4.9 liter non North Star V8. Um, today uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace the idle air control uh, valve. Uh, Sometimes people call it the idle speed control. Um, it's actually this part right here. Um, I actually replaced this here back a few years ago and this part here is, it's always been notorious for going out. Um, this part here, they actually put these back, you know, they started putting these on here back in the 80s and, um, you know, went from like early 80s up until like 95 when they stopped making this engine. And so even more, what's even more interesting is some of the Chrysler um, engines had this here. I know some of the Jeeps had this, uh, this kind of setup style right here. Um, some Chevrolets had it, some Jeeps, um, you know, the old school Dodge Ram, the D-150s and D-250s and W w150 so all that had but um today got the brand new one in so for the reason i'm changing this out here so this part here like i said because what it was doing like when you shut it off it had to wear one idle properly so it had an island too high and this here has got the little screw on the end right here so you have to kind of adjust the screw to kind of get it where it needs to be set at per the parameters of the um of the um service repair manual so i'm gonna show you where I had already kind of started taking this off and um so what i ended up doing was so i had already took it off i took the air the air holes the air uh air filter assembly off already because like i said i started messing with it a couple days ago then like i said i just had to um you know just wait for the part so you can get that part locally you know most of you like all the part stores who your preferred is you know, you can go there, Amazon, eBay, you know, whatever you prefer. Um, so, yeah, I had already took that off. And so it's not really a hard job to do. Um, really, like I said, once you get off the air hose assembly, which goes right here, it's normally right here. And then you just take this off here. This is your PCV uh, tube. You just pull that out, pull it off and, pull you know, get it out the way. And then you have your two t30 uh torque screws um it goes right there but like i said i already kind of pre-took it off um like i said what i'm gonna do i'm gonna just kind of show you how to do the install portion of it because like i, said, I already took it off already so we really won't be able to show that to you unfortunately so but that is what i got going on today so it's gonna be a light project um just want to kind of show you how to set these things up on these cars um like i said you know 94 and 95 you know this body style right here so this body style went from 94 to 99 so um but like i said 94 you know 94 to 99 was his body style and then the first two early years of it 94 and 5 had the 4.9 leaders they you know they had north stars as an option and then you know 96 all the way out they went complete north star they got rid of this engine but believe it or not this engine it came with 200 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque but you know the north star more powerful motor obviously but these 4.9s right here they are way much way way more reliable than the north star these here are easy to work on too i remember like the earlier earlier versions of these devils especially like when they did the short body years that would have been like 85 to 88 but really you can go really 85 to 93 because you know 90 you know like 89 they did like a real big like huge refresh and but you know they had the 4.5s in them and things like that and then um but like trying to get to the plugs the plugs is always easy to get up here like in the back they were a pain in a complete ass they were horrible this one here wasn't that bad i remember i had put plugs in this car back a few years ago and you know it's got the hundred thousand mile plugs on it but only put like maybe like thirty thousand miles in this car since i had it it just got eighty five thousand miles on it now so but um but anyway, I'm just going to show you how to do this repair, show you how to set it up and, um, and go from there. But I'll be back in a minute. Let me get things set up and show you what tools you need to use for it, for this project and go from there and be back. in. All right. So I'm back. All right. So this right here, this is the part number for the um, idle air control uh, valve. 
or you can call it an idle speed control motor. Um, they got a couple different names, but it's all related to the same thing. Uh, one of the things I want to point out is, is this here. So even though this came with a bracket right here, um, you see it's totally different. So this is the one that came off my car and this is the one that was included with it. You see, it's totally different. So you see that won't work. So it's very important. Don't never throw away anything because you may need it. And um, even though it came with some nuts and some other stuff here, um, you definitely want to save this here too. This is a screw that goes in into the assembly right here into the ISC motor. So you definitely want to keep that because a lot of times when they give you the new ones, uh, a lot of times they are way too long. And so you really can't even use that. So I don't really don't know why they include that in there. It's nice that they do include it, but usually a lot of times you really don't, you really can't even use that. So it's always just best to use the factory one. Uh, that one's much more better. Um, kept the nuts and everything. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this together here. Put this, put this bracket here that needs to go on my car here onto the new motor. And um, like I said, we go ahead and get that button up, get it tightened up, and uh, go from there. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so all right, back again, real quick. Oops. All right, so what I ended up doing was, uh, like I said, I got the bracket on here. Um, like I said, you know, it came with three nuts with it, but I just used the ones that I had already. So um, there was nothing wrong with them. It just had like a little washer, and uh, I just took a eight millimeter wrench and just tightened those down and uh i got it plugged in here and then basically what you're gonna do is like you just like i said you have those two um torx uh screws it's basically just t30 so they get one that goes at the top and one at the bottom so uh let's see if i can try to zoom in on this a little bit so you can kind of see this here but it's, i don't know you may not be able to see it may not i don't know i could if i take this off you can see a little bit better but anyway you got those you got those two holes right there so you got the one that goes at the top which is right here and then you had that one down there at the bottom and so you just put those in there and um just you know you just like i said run a you know run one of the screws in there just so you just you know just it just kind of lines itself up and then um that's pretty much it that's all it's going to do and then uh the most important part of this is uh, before you're ready to put all this stuff in here and you know starting the car to set everything up you definitely want to make sure this works because i had bought one it was from another manufacturer and did all this stuff hooked the damn thing up it didn't say absolutely nothing didn't even move out or anything so uh even though thank god this repair uh wasn't that hard to do but uh it's definitely rec you know I, I would recommend like doing it while the engine is cold because the engine hot because you know the intake is aluminum you know the heads are you know this is, you know this is an interesting motor you know so you know the heads on here are cast iron but the block was aluminum and then of course the intake is aluminum but this damn thing put out a lot of heat so you know it's good to kind of do this now you know why it's cool you know that way you can kind of maneuver with it. i mean you can maneuver if it was warm too if it's the engine hot or whatever but it's definitely better to do it this way here in my opinion but anyway so um i'm gonna get those screws in there i ain't gonna be able to show you that you know like some me doing it you know doing it this way and tightening it down and everything else so but um, I'm gonna get this on here, get this position, and um, I might be able to show you a little bit, but I'll be back. All right, so got the, uh, I'm back again. So I got the uh, idle speed control, uh, got it installed on the, uh, what it does, it installs on the throttle body right here, as you see here. So as I showed in the last part of the video, you know, like I so said, you got two Torx heads. Those are T30, so you have one at the top right here, and then you want to have one at the bottom right there. I know you may, you may can see it, you may not, but it is a little kind of confined down here a little bit, so that's why I had to take off the, um, you know, the air filter, you know, housing assembly off the off the car. And uh, so what we're going to do now, before I get ready to button everything else up on here, I'm going to make sure that this thing works. So that's really important. So I took the battery off. I just took the negative off, and... Um, like so I'm gonna put this on here. Get this on here. That just the uh, PCV, um, you know, uh, PCV valve um, hose that goes right here. So you know, hooks up into the throttle body, then it just goes into the PCV valve over there, assembly there. So that's what this is here. So, um, so we'll go ahead and um, put the negative cable back on here. Just gonna put that right here on the spark. So we know we got some spark there. So now we got we got power. Let's see if I can do this one handed here and try to hold the phone. Okay, 
get that good and tight like that all right so let's go to the car let's make sure it works so i should hear something on here just make sure this thing retracts back and forth so if it doesn't do that then that means it's no good so and that really sucked but thank god this repair is not you know it don't take that long to do on this car and that's a beautiful day in the neighborhood in the old city of dallas here let's see here i'm gonna turn the key on i'll see if we make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do so if i hear you know going back and forth then i know it works then I know we'd be safe to, um, you know, kind of proceed on to the next step. And that's setting the idle speed control motor on the car. So let's see. Okay, I hear something. I heard something, let's see. Okay. All right, so this is gonna be the last part of this video right here. So after you confirm that your idle, at your new um, idle speed control motor working like it's supposed to, uh, which I did confirm it up here. Um, so how to set this up is, is, is pretty simple. It's not hard at all. Um, you know, I know a lot of kind of younger guys or just even really a younger guy thing. Uh, it's just people who really desire this, you know, these, you know, these older DeVilles. Um, you know, like I said, like I said again, this got the 4.9 in it. You know, you had a 4.5, and then you had the 4100. Uh, even had the idle speed motor on those too. And the setup is almost the same exact thing. But one thing I do like about, you know, this generation here, they made it easier to set that up. So to show you how we're gonna set that up is as follows. So we're getting into the car. Um, so what we're gonna do? We're gonna go ahead and turn the key on. Make sure we ain't got no uh, music playing. Cause I definitely don't want to get hit with no, you know, violation or anything like this or anything along those lines. So uh, I know it's kind of flashing, so I'm trying to eliminate that. So okay, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is how to get into your diagnostic screen on this cal on these Cadillacs right here, uh, 80s and these early 90s. So you're gonna hit off, you're gonna push the off and warmer button at the same time, right? So I'm doing that, holding it down. So now it's going to enter diagnostics. So it's going to say no PCM codes. Uh, this is how you pull up. This is how you actually pull up your treble codes on your Cadillac, you know, like this here. Um, so it's pulling up like old history codes because that reason it did that because I had disconnected the battery. Then there was a couple of fuses I actually had pulled off too. So you got R061 history, uh, R062 history. Uh, these are all old treble codes on here. And so what we're going to do is, so like it goes to PCM, you're going to hit your fan button. You're going to go, going to hit up on this here, right? And then you're gonna go down, and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to override, which is this one. So we're gonna go up, and then we're gonna go down, and then what we're gonna go, what we're gonna go to, because we gotta extend out the um, idle speed motor out to set it. So we're gonna go to PS03, and uh, we're getting almost close to it. Sorry about the sun being into the camera, that kind of sucks. So. Um, okay, so you see where it says 50 at right here, and so to extract that that speed motor, we're gonna hit warmer, and then see it goes to 99. So at that point, then um, it should extend it out, which I did hear it. Okay, so then what we're gonna do next is we're gonna go to off, gonna push that button, and then we're gonna go down because we need to go to data. So we're gonna go right here. We're gonna push up on the fan uh, fan speed. Gonna push up and see this here, 11.9. So this is how you get your reading right here. So to get the reading on here for it to be safe, it needs to be at 13.4. So which meaning is, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get out the car real quick. And um, we're gonna go ahead and get out the car. And then what you'll do is, um, you know, so what you'll do is, you have to come right here and then you just kind of pull this back here and then you'll kind of like you're going to kind of like screw this out so typically you just you need to like a wrench but like i said what i'm end up doing i'm probably just going to put like a little bit of loctite on here because to be honest that is kind of loose it's not supposed to be that loose like that so let me get a screwdriver and stick in here real quick so i can kind of show you a little bit better of what i'm doing so hold on let me put the phone down real quick okay all right so sorry about that Okay, so 
I'm just gonna kind of screw this back here. See that right there? It's not supposed to screw, it's screw out. It's supposed to have a little bit of tension to it. But anyway, you're just gonna kind of like do this, just little turns right here. And uh, what you'll do at that point then, you'll just go ahead and just let up off of this. And then like I said, if you're at 13.4, then you know, we'll be okay. So how you check that is, is this here. So we're gonna go back to the car. So, uh, so it's actually 11.9. So we need to turn out a little bit more. So, so you'll keep turning and then you got to keep checking. So now it'd be super cool if you had like another person to help you out with this here and they can just let you know like, hey, you at 13.4, then you're okay. But when you're doing this by yourself, so you're just going to have to kind of go ahead and keep walking back and forth a little bit, you know, just going to the front of the car. So you're going to keep twisting this out here until you get to 13.4 and then that'd be a safe number. Then you'll be good to go. So let's see where we at. So we're going to turn down a little bit more. All right. Let's see where we at. And see, we're almost there. See, now we're at 12.7. If I need to get to 13.4, that's a safe number. That, that's where it's supposed to be at per the, um, the repair service manual for this car. So we're just gonna peel it back again, just a little bit. And we're gonna take, just do, we probably just do like a half a turn if that. So you just wanna get it, just you ain't gotta wolf it down. And then after that, that should be it. So I think we might be right there where we need to be at, which is what? 13.4 almost there yeah that's 13.0 that would be acceptable too but we're going to do 13.4 so that way we know we're good so we just got to make like a a quarter turn and then we're just going to go ahead and just turn it just to here I don't need much so let's see alright see what we got now we should be right there at it And guess what? We're right there, 13.4. That's where we need to be at. So now I can go ahead, since we know that the idle speed control motor is working. Um, so we know we got, so we know we got reading and everything. So we know we got a signal going to this. So now I can go ahead and put everything back on here. And you have to let this thing idle for like 13 minutes. So it's a little procedure for this here. So um, you have to let it idle down for like 13 minutes. You shut it off, shut it off. You leave it off about, about 20 seconds then you turn the key on and then you go through the whole diagnostics thing i i I'll probably just go ahead and just show you how to do everything while i'm at it so in the sense of me half-assing the video for you so um i felt like i did that here couldn't really show the end you know couldn't show the removal of this here because it is kind of tight in here if you see it so but i i, I kind of show you how to do that but anyway let me get everything buttoned up on here and we'll go ahead and let it idle down it's probably gonna go up and down up and down and all this stuff here until it adjusts itself but uh give me a minute i'll be right back with you and just like that, now it's look like a motor. So this is how it's supposed to look. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through it, let us do its procedure. Like I said, you gotta let it idle for like 13 minutes or so. And so like I said, it's gonna probably gonna be hiding up and down or whatever until it kind of finds its you know, sweet spot or whatever, but everything been done. So um, like I said, we're gonna go ahead and do a cold start on this thing here. And just like that, start it on up. So running super smooth right now, so. That's how these old 4.9 sound when they cold started like this here. A little raspy. They always been a raspy motor. But like I said, I'll take this here over at North Star any time of the day. And like I said, that's a fresh cold start. So, um, so yeah, that's it. But like I said, um, so let it idle down. Let it idle. Because it had to run for about 13 minutes or so. But I'm going to kind of show you a little example of this here. So, like I said, this is going to be the boring part of the video right here. So I'll probably just end up doing a separate one of this. But anyway, what you really have to do is, uh, like once you go, once it idles for like 13 minutes right now, um, you know, then at that point then, you gotta go back into your diagnostics, make sure you don't have any codes or anything, and then you shut it off, 
and then you'll turn it on but don't start it and then you go through the whole diagnostic so you have to do that so this whole procedure here probably takes about 30 minutes to do these here on these Cadillacs though but I might go ahead and do it I was said I was gonna try to do it in the in this video here but like I said but I'm gonna go ahead and shut it off I'm gonna let I don't do its thing and then I'll show you how to do that whole process of what has to be done while it's idling so I'll be back with you but I'm not gonna go and keep y'all on here for no 13 minutes while the damn thing island that, that's not fair to y'all so <laughs> but anyway uh, if you like this so far this video man just give me a thumbs up I greatly appreciate it and uh, I'll be back with y'all in a minute